Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just after 2 o'clock in Honolulu, 8 o'clock in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. It is September the 15th, 2017 and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review and what an interesting week we have seen. Capping it off was some downside action in the precious metals markets with gold trading lower, almost $6 on the day to close at. 1323.50, a 15 cent decline in silver, 1763, and a two tenths of a percent decline in the US dollar, which settled at 91.65. New record highs in the US equities markets Dow Jones Industrial Average, 22,268, NASDAQ, 6448, and the SP has finally hit 2,500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has once again closed at a new all-time record high at 22268 And although it is logical to see these higher prices as a direct expression of solid economic data, I am still a little perplexed as to why the market is not reacting in any strong manner to recent events stemming from North Korea. And that market sentiment flows over into safe haven assets such as gold, with gold actually weakening on the day, losing about $6 in value as it closes at $13.23. Now, while it is logical that we would see downside pressure in gold pricing today, given that there is such a strong risk on environment with equities running as strongly as they are. But just as in the equities markets, there seems to be a total disregard to recent events by North Korea in terms of adding premium to gold or putting potential downside pressure in U.S. equities. That being said, I do not believe there was any major chart damage to our current bullish model. Now, we've been pretty busy this week, exiting a trade on Monday in which we bought gold at roughly $1,300 and then sold it at $1,332, taking out a $3,200 profit or approximately 30% return on the trade. And that was followed by yesterday's trade recommendation in which we recommended the initiation of long positions. Traders taking that call entered the trade at 1331, which was roughly $8 above current pricing. Now, all of our most recent trades have been predicated upon our current model, which recognizes that gold did in fact bottom at $1,040 end of 2015 beginning of 2016 and from that point until present we have seen gold prices be characterized as a series of higher highs as well as higher lows a traditional bullish model which brings us to our current model that focuses upon this most recent leg of the rally from july 10th when gold prices bottomed at roughly 1200 dollars per ounce to current pricing we look at the first leg of this rally, which was 1200 to 1280 as a wave one, the subsequent correction, which turned out to be a 23% retracement, concluded a wave two. This recent surge to our record high for the year concluded a wave three. And I have been under the belief that yesterday's price action really signaled a conclusion to this corrective wave four, putting us at the beginning of an upside move, wave five. As long as prices hold above, say, 1320, 1321, this bullish model stays intact. And most importantly, we are now able to forecast an upside target based upon waves one and waves five being roughly equal in length. If that is the case, we could see gold trade as high as $1,400 over the next couple of months. Therefore, my recommendation is to maintain your current long position as well as your current stop placement. Traders, as we review the past week, we can see that we have continued on this dynamic rally and just recently concluded a small correction, what we're calling a wave four, just yesterday. My sense is that if recent activity these lows at around 23 hold it did not cause any major chart damage however a move well below 1318 would negate that 
This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you next week for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.